Hi and a warm welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you my top slug proof perennials. We've all been there in that situation where we plant out some beautiful plants and then come the following day, you find either they're no longer there because they've gone completely or there's only a little bit of a skeleton that's left. And usually it's the slugs that's the cause of this devastation. Now, over the years, we have tried to grow plants that we know are slug proof. And most of what you see in the garden today is pretty much 100% slug proof. Some of it is maybe 80, 90% slug proof. And we do have to think of some clever ways to keep the slugs away from those plants that are a little bit more susceptible. And we do this by usually placing them up high on a table where the slugs have a much harder time to get to those positions and get to those plants. And we also have our nightly slug patrols that we do in the evening when it gets dark. And we take any slugs that we find in the garden, munching our plants onto the field, which is just a stone's throw away from our garden. And that just keeps the numbers down. The first plant I want to talk about, which is completely 100% slug proof, is the one just in front of me here. And these are geums. And these come in a variety of different colours, reds, oranges, yellows, and a kaleidoscope of everywhere in between those colours too. Um, this particular one, we don't know the name of, but it's a beautiful open red variety. And you see these lovely leaves. These leaves are quite furry, so it does mean that they're not attractive to slugs. Um, these are a plant that require quite a bit of moisture, so don't go planting them somewhere which is in full sun, in free draining soil, because they will wilt. You'll see these kind of like drooping and the leaves will start to droop as well. So they do need a little bit of moisture, but as much sun as you can give them, providing you've got that moisture retentive soil. We're growing them here in a container and we do keep on top of the water. Um, if it's particularly dry, these get watered daily. There are many, many different varieties you can grow. We have this red one, we have some, totally tangerine orange in the border just just that side there and recently we've also got some yellow ones that again we don't know the name of but they are just beautiful and if you just deadhead them we keep getting lots and lots of flowers and these ones are just throwing up a second flush of flowers as we speak so we had many flowers when we first planted this container and now we're up to the second flush which is now just coming out and there's even more i mean this is so floriferous, it's just wonderful. And these leaves can take on quite a nice purple color as they age. So there's lots and lots of virtues to this wonderful plant. My second plant is geraniums, hardy geraniums. And these come again in a multitude of colors and they flower, some flower in the spring, some throughout the summer, and they go on into the autumn. Some flower just the once, but a lot of them do repeat if you give them a chop back once they're looking tired. Now this is a beautiful one which is looking fantastic at the moment and this is called Nimbus and it has these beautiful pale purple flowers and they are just adored by the bees and even the actual seed heads that it's farming are attractive. So what we'll do with this one is when this is looking tired we'll give this a proper chop all the way back to the base with some shears or some secutors and then we'll get new foliage and a fresh flush of flowers. And a lot of the hardy geraniums are like this. So you're getting lots and lots of flower power throughout many, many months throughout the summer. Now there's geraniums that prefer to be in a shady position. So things like geranium phaeum and geranium nidosan are shade loving geraniums. Geranium phaeum is a spring flower, which you can get repeat flowers going into the summer. And geranium nidosan flowers all the way through the summer and is my go-to plant for that shady border. Hardy geraniums have quite a few different habits. Some like this one are mound farming and there's also some that are more upright. So we grow another one called Mrs. Kendall Clark in the border just towards the back and that is more of a tall upright geranium. There's a geranium for every situation. They are brilliant for wildlife and they are completely slug proof. My next plant is Persicaria and I've got this one in front of me now and this is a low growing variety. 
This is Persicaria bistata superba. And the flowers first start initially pink and then they fade to lovely shades of darker pink and then almost red. And they have these lovely stems which are veined with red on the leaves and have these beautiful flowers at the very top. This is a fantastic plant. It is completely slug proof. This particular one is a mat farming plant. So it grows pretty much along the floor. And then you have these lovely spires, these lovely lollipops of these beautiful feathery flowers. We have another variety of Persicaria, which is Persicaria amplexicalis. And the variety we have of that is called Firetail. And that has a very, very tall habit and has bottle brush, deep red flowers. And we have that towards the back of the border in the main perennial border behind me. That's not in flower yet, but that is a bit of a thug. But if you do have space, that is a good choice to have, to have a beautiful plant that is completely slug proof. So next we have this beautiful Centranthus ruba. Now this is just coming to the point when it's trying to set seed. And these seeds you'll see are very, very fluffy. And literally they will just fly off and get sown somewhere else in the garden and we'll have lots and lots of tiny centranthus plants all over the place now this is a brilliant plant for a sunny position very free draining soil and if you give it those conditions it grows perfectly the only problem with it is it is a prolific self seeder and if you don't want to have so many plants all over your garden when these are now coming to the end just give them a chop back to a couple of buds and we'll get fresh growth and fresh flowers. And this will still be in flower towards the beginning of autumn, if you keep doing it that way. And these set these flowers are actually quite scented. Now I've never noticed that before, up until a few nights ago, I was just in this area towards doing our slug rounds and these, the scent from this is actually quite remarkable. And it's not a thing that I even imagined was even scented, but come the evening, it has a delicious perfume so not only is it slug proof it's also got that added bonus of having that beautiful scent too and i'll just post it to another video we made regarding this plant and that is one where we visited north wales and i'll put a link up on the screen there andrew just takes you back to some of the places he used to go as a child in, in north wales and this plant was a favorite then and still is today next we have lichnis salsadonica and this is a beautiful orangey red tall perennial and we've grown this for many many years it can grow much taller than this this is only quite short because recently i've divided it but normally it can probably get probably up to as high as that these are fantastic plants it's a very very lovely shade of red and we have these beautiful open flowers which are perfect for pollinators this lovely dark greenish kind of leaf but this is a perfect plant does not get at all attacked by slugs and if you're wanting something vertical with this kind of vibrant red colour this is probably a great choice for you. From the Lichnis Chaltodonica we now move on to the Lichnis Coronaria. So this is this one and this has, this particular one, has these beautiful pinkish flowers, nice and open. You'll see the butterflies, the bees and the moths just loving these. Particularly at night time you see the moths going into these flowers. And this is a brilliant plant for a sunny position in free draining soil. And as you can see, it has these very furry leaves. And again, these are not at all attractive to slugs. So if you're looking for a plant like this, it grows and flowers all summer long. If you just keep deadheading, so there's a couple down here that have just gone over there. If you just take that right back to there, you'll see that more flowers will be farmed and this will continue flowering right up until the beginning of autumn. Another brilliant slug proof plant is Stachish officinalis humulo and this has these beautiful spires, they're not quite open yet but these will open into some lovely pink spires. I've got another one there as well. Again the slugs do not like them, it has quite a feathery type of foliage, quite a furry type and again perfectly slug proof. Now these are really great planted if you have a really good big space 
because they're absolutely fantastic and these are fantastic for bees the bees absolutely adore these plants so not only are they great for wildlife they're also slug proof which is two things which gives me a great winner and then just behind we have the lovely sword shaped leaves of the crocosmia and you can just see there the very beginnings of the flowers and all crocosmias are completely slug proof the slugs do not even bother with this foliage whatsoever so unlike the gladioli that I've tried to grow before and had little success because of the slugs this crocosmia is perfectly fine and all crocosmia is perfectly slug proof this one is lucifer so when these flowers come out they will be the deepest red absolutely fantastic and this when it's grown a bit more mature can be very very tall so if you're looking for a very unusual flower with this type of foliage something that's red colored and something that's good for the back of a border look no further than crocosmia lucifer there are some other varieties which are suitable for the front of the border and towards the middle so you've got a range of choice and these come in the hot color tones of the reds oranges and yellows now if like me you like to grow ornamental grasses this one is cow forester and this is a beautiful tall erect plant it has these lovely feathery flowers which will start to turn once they turn to seed into the most beautiful brown and this is a very fantastic plant for growing towards the back of the border it grows very very tall and we're in danger here of it actually getting into the magnolia tree so we'll have to do a bit of topping up to give this space but all ornamental grasses are slug proof so if you want to grow your perennials with some beautiful contrast some beautiful contrast of foliage and flower plumes just like this one ornamental grasses is where it's at next up we have the penstenums and all the penstenums again are completely slug proof this particular one is penstenum garnet it has these lovely beautiful red flowers beautiful shape and the bees just love going into these little flower booths and getting that rich pollen and nectar and again with deadheading these these will flower all summer long and the great for the front of the border are somewhere in the middle so these will flower all summer long they're really good for wildlife and they're also slug proof now a lot of them will be quite tender so you have to make sure that you take cuttings in summer to make sure you've got plants for next year unless you have a mildish winter these survived our winter last year because it wasn't that cold so these have just come up after a good prune and these will flower again all the way into autumn if you're looking for a front of the border plant and you're looking for something that is predominantly evergreen look no further than the begenias now this particular one is rosy close it has the most beautiful pink flowers in the springtime and if we look here we usually get a second flush in the summertime as well they have these beautiful attractive leaves they're quite leathery and they do have purple tones just as they're starting to age so they have many many different attributes these beautiful leaves the lovely flowers they are adored by the bees when the flowers come out and they're also perfectly slug proof so absolutely fine they're grown here in a part shade position they do need a little bit of moisture so don't put them somewhere completely dry otherwise the flowering will be affected next within the same border we have this beautiful ligularia and these have the most beautiful lovely stems and then as you get up you have these beautiful raggedy looking flowers this particular one is a yellow and they go up all the way to the top so they start to flower at the bottom and work the way up to the top and there's many flower spikes on the one plant this is a moisture loving so if you have a situation where you have boggy ground or moisture retentive ground this is a perfect candidate for that type of situation completely slug proof really attractive these beautiful large leaves in themselves are quite attractive the actual stems are attractive but you have the added bonus of having those vibrant yellow flowers again in the same border we have this lovely lime green flower plant and this one's called alcamilla mollis has these beautiful fluffy lime green flowers they're very tiny 
but they're absolutely spectacular. And these come out towards the late springtime going into summer. And they also have these beautiful furry kind of leaves. Again, you're noticing the, noticing the trend. Furry leaves means mostly that the slugs leave things alone. And then once this is finished, we'll give this a chop back unless you want to have lots and lots of plants around your garden because these do, again, self-sow everywhere. And what we'll get is a fresh flush of leaf. There'll be no more flowers, but we'll have some beautiful new foliage to be enjoying throughout the rest of summer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope it's given you some ideas of which plants are slug proof and can be grown confidently without any problems with the slugs eating them. Please give us a like, please subscribe. Subscribing is completely free. It's not a subscription at all. It's just a completely free uh, method of getting to see our videos and following our journey. We'll see you very, very soon on the next one. In the meantime, please do take care and happy gardening.